Breaking news. Canon launches a direct assault on Sony, releasing a free firmware update for the aging Canon R5 that gives it 400 megapixel images. And we tested it. We dug in to find out how it works. Our testing uncovered some fascinating things for anybody who likes to understand how things work. I'll tell you all about it. But first, I want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace makes gorgeous websites incredibly easy. You do not have to be a geek like me to set up your own website. Go to squarespace.com slash Tony. Set up a website for your photography portfolio, your video reel, your business, your personal project. Get your own custom domain. I have four or five of my own. Some for business, some for personal projects, just ways to make a home for something on the web that is not stupid social media owned by some billionaire. This is something you own. Get started today at squarespace.com slash Tony and try it for free, no credit card required. After you love it, the coupon code Tony will get you 10% off. Thank you, Squarespace. Canon is not known for making catchy names and they're calling this feature in-body image stabilization high resolution shot or IBIS high resolution shot. I'm going to compare it to Sony's pixel shift technology. Both features work in fundamentally the same way. They take advantage of the sensor's sensor stabilization capability, which moves the sensor around. And they capture multiple different images, moving the sensor a fraction of a pixel between each image. Those images are then stacked to create sharper, higher resolution images. That's really where the similarities between these two cameras end. I'll get into that more in a bit, but first I want to show you the quality improvement that you get comparing a RAW file from the Canon R5 to its new 400 megapixel mode. On the left, a 45 megapixel Canon R5 RAW file, and on the right, a 400 megapixel Canon R5 IBIS high resolution shot enhance. In the 45 megapixel file, we see a very sharp rendering of Chelsea's eye on the cover of our award-winning photography book. And on the right, you see the texture of the printing process. There is so much more detail. Enhance more. This is real life. This is more detail than I can see with the human eye. When we think of high resolution, this is what we want. That's amazing, but it gets even more amazing as we dig into how it actually works. All the Sony cameras work fundamentally the same. They produce an image up to four times the sensor's native resolution, or twice the horizontal resolution and twice the vertical resolution. The Canon works a little different. It triples the width and height of the image, and three squared is nine. So the output resolution is about nine times the original resolution, so our 45 megapixel RAW files become 400 megapixel files, or about twice the resolution of the Sony camera. To make this even more interesting, the Canon only seems to capture nine shots, whereas the Sony captures 16 shots. This reveals a fundamental difference in how they operate, but I wanna show you the pictures first, and then we'll talk about those differences. So let's go into the lab in a very controlled environment here in my basement. This is Canon's JPEG because it simply can't shoot raw, but right now we care about detail. Looking at the eye, the Canon immediately looks sharper, but I can tell there's been some sharpening applied. There's more contrast than Sony's raw file. So to make this fair, I need to balance these out by processing this raw file a bit. With equal processing, I, I just cannot see any difference. Certainly not the type of difference you'd expect to see comparing an image with twice as much resolution. That lab test showed even more interesting results, but you have to understand a little bit about how camera sensors work. Camera sensors have a bare filter. While they might have 50 million pixels, each pixel by default cannot capture all colors. Each one has a color filter in front of it. Every group of four pixels has one blue, one red, and two green pixels. This is the bare filter. Your camera takes information from every group of four pixels to determine the actual color of something to create a color image. 
Now there are two greens in every group of four, so green gets about 50% of the megapixels or 25 megapixels on a 50 megapixel camera. But when photographing red or blue subjects, you can only capture about one out of every four pixels. A 50 megapixel camera would have about 12 megapixels of information for red and blue subjects. It's not 12 megapixels like a Sony a7S III where they're full size pixels. These are quarter sized pixels. So your low light gathering capability, your amount of noise would be more similar to a 12 megapixel micro four thirds camera. The bare filter significantly decreases the image quality you can get. It's just nobody's figured out anything better. But pixel shift completely works around this by shifting the pixels one full pixel. So every single pixel has red, blue, and green, green information. And then the Sony shifts half a pixel more and repeats the whole process. That doubles the width and height, and it gets full color information for every single one of those pixels. We don't have detailed information about how Canon's IBIS high resolution mode works, but from what I can tell, it shifts the sensor sideways, one third of a pixel, one third of a pixel, one third of a pixel. Then it goes up one third of a pixel and goes sideways again, one third of a pixel, one third of a pixel. So basically it captures nine images in a three by three grid. But every pixel in each of those individual nine images only has the RGB bare filter information. It does not have full color information. The Sony system captures 16 separate images, but basically four images, each with full RGB information. So in areas of blue or red, your resolution is going to be about one quarter or about 100 megapixels. Whereas the Sony in areas of blue or red will still have 200 megapixels of real information. To see the effects of this, let's take a look at a blue portion of the image by looking at my friend Ira Block's book on Cuba. The Sony reveals the texture of the printed book cover in the blues, and the Canon looks completely blurry. Our first test was clearly a win for the Sony. As long as we're keeping score, let's talk about the processing. Sony captures 16 raw images and writes them all to the card. You have to take the card out, put it into a computer, run Sony's proprietary software, you can't do this in Lightroom, import them and then export ARQ files and that you can finally pull into Lightroom and use your normal workflow. The Canon combines them in camera, making JPEG files that you could send to your phone or bring into Lightroom or whatever. In the real world, the pixel shift images add a lot of time to your workflow. It is inconvenient. The Canon workflow is much simpler. Also, in the real world, you could zoom into your images on the Canon and make sure that they turned out. On the Sony, you can only look at each of the individual RAW files. You cannot look at the combined image, and thus you cannot assess whether or not the image turned out, and it often does not turn out. So for real-time, real-world processing, the Canon gets a point, bringing our game to a tie. But now we move out into the real world, and before we get to the Canon versus Sony tests, I wanna compare the Sony images against themselves. Let's take a look at the same pixel shift Sony image, one processed to remove movement, which is done in post-processing, and another that does not have that. Enhance. On the left, we see the result when processing the same Sony files with the cancel movement option selected, and on the right, we see what happens if you don't select that. The car was not moving the earth was moving a little bit. And that meant the Sony could not combine the individual images in an effective way. The Sony software detects this and uses the detail from only a single image. So in this real world scenario and every real world scenario I've used pixel shift in, I end up with the detail from only a single image. Same tripod, same setting, same scene, enhance. Wow, the Canon wins by a mile. It is so much more detailed. If you look at the letter E here, it's all smushy on the Sony. Why is this? Why didn't this show up in the lab environment? Because this is just taken from one single 50 megapixels image because the Sony cannot cancel out camera shake between the individual images. The Canon seems to continue its sensor stabilization throughout the entire nine image capture. That's right, Canon cancels camera shake and this is huge. I've been begging Sony since the first release of Pixel Shift to use the sensor stabilization technology to stabilize the image across the entire 16 image capture. But I guess they haven't figured out how to do that and that's why so many of my pictures are messed up. But Canon figured it out, they cracked the code. Those are clearly stabilized because I took those images in the exact same conditions and the Canon turned out while the Sony's was ruined 100% of the time, it's ruined. 
So give Canon a point for producing more detailed images in real world situations. But wait, the Canon is just a JPEG file and this image has lots of dynamic range. So let's try recovering the shadows and see if that really makes a difference. This is a backlit shot and of course we'd wanna see all that detail. So let's increase the shadows in post and let's peer into the shadows. Here we can see the Sony looks much better. The Canon shows massive amounts of false color, heavy banding. Look at the crazy artifacts around this edge. These are things you can't accept if you're going for a 400 megapixel image. Of course, your whole goal here is image quality. We all know if you care about image quality, then RAW is better than JPEG. So it is bizarre to me that Canon chose to give us only JPEGs and throw out that extra dynamic range information since you're only gonna use this if you are obsessive about capturing the most detailed image possible. Now, there are ways to work around this. You could bracket your images. Take pictures at negative two stops, zero stops, and plus two stops of exposure, and then combine them in something like, like Lightroom. That works great but Canon doesn't allow bracketing when you're using the IBIS high resolution shot mode. So you could still do it. You could just manually adjust the exposure up and down and take three or five shots and then combine them and that would get you the extra dynamic range. But albeit now you have uh, probably five 400 megapixel files that you need to combine and Lightroom will probably cry. And actually you're getting so much more detail they probably would look better. But Keep in mind that extra few steps that you need to go through. So this is a big, big point for the Canon. I probably should give the Canon more points, but right now we're tied at two and two. But camera shake isn't the only movement we encounter in the real world. Every little leaf on the tree is moving. Even on a still day, water is moving, clouds are moving, and any sort of subject movement will also ruin the images. And here the two cameras handle it completely differently. So let's take a look. Let's zoom in on this tree in the background. That should be pretty stable. Here the Canon image is a complete mess. This means it's going to be unusable for any sort of nature, photography, landscapes, etc. Clearly, automatically removing subject removal is a win for the Sony, even though it reduces the image detail in those parts of the image to the original 50 megapixel sensor. You could work around this on the Canon by capturing a regular file, overlaying it, and going into Photoshop and brushing the layers over to eliminate any weird subject movement. But again, you've added a whole lot of time to your workflow and the results will be the same. So I am glad Sony finally has this option available, albeit it is only available on the most recent cameras like the Sony a7R 5 and the Sony Alpha 1. But as of right now, Sony is in the lead. But let's talk about storage size here. Each JPEG file on the Canon is about 100 megabytes. Each pixel shift image consumes about 1.6 gigabytes or 1600 megabytes. So they're significantly bigger. So for storage size, I have to give the Canon another point. So right now it's a tie, we need a tie breaker. So I brought the Canon out to see if I could hand hold it because we know the stabilization is working across images because it cancels out the movement of my tripod, but would it work handheld? Let's find out. At 24 millimeters, I could usually hand hold this at a second or maybe even two seconds, but trying over and over again, every single shot produced massively shaky, unusable results. So this did not settle the tie. So now, Oh, it's over to the judges. I have to decide which has more useful high resolution mode. Both of these have been my main camera at different times, but right now I gotta say oh, the Canon R5 wins. The Canon R5 is the best full frame camera for making high resolution images. Those 400 megapixel images are incredible. And the fact that I can finally take them into the real world, I can do things I could never do before, at least with still subjects, things like cars, architecture, as long as there's not any movement in the scene, I can get those images with a Canon and I cannot do it with the Sony. So it is infinitely more useful to me. I gotta give it to Canon, congratulations. To recap the differences, the Sony produces 200 megapixel files with full color information in a RAW file. The Canon R5 produces 400 megapixel images in a bare file without full color information in JPEG form. The Sony's images are about 16 times larger than the Canon's, and the Sony actually takes longer to capture each image. First, a two second shutter delay was not enough to cancel out shutter shock, so I had to always use a 10 second delay. So the entire time to capture the image was about 17.5 seconds, during which time I could not move or touch the camera. After that, I was free to use the viewfinder and take pictures. 
The Canon only required a two second delay to have 100% success rates. Capturing each image took about 1.7 seconds and then about nine seconds for it to process them. I can move the camera, I can go into the menus during this time period, but what I can't do is use the viewfinder or take other pictures. The Canon processes them in camera so you can review them in the field and no app or post processing is required and it eliminates camera shake. The Sony requires a separate app and it can eliminate subject movement, like the moving of leaves, but it can't eliminate camera shake and it's so sensitive that you can't actually take it anywhere in the real world where those moving subjects could be eliminated. And because of that limitation, you really can't get useful images out of it in the real world. It'll detect the camera shake as subject movement and basically just give you an, an, a single 50 megapixel image file that is very large. Some of you are saying this is not a Sony versus Canon battle. Fuji has pixel shift in medium format cameras. Pentax really popularized this. Well, I'm not gonna test all of those right now. I don't want to. But if you do want to see how they fare against the medium format Fuji, write a comment and maybe I'll rent one and I can do the test for you. For those of you who might be using the Canon R5, I want to share a few things I've learned. First, there doesn't seem to be a way to create an easy shortcut for it. So you basically always have to go into the menu system, camera on page five. It does not support bracketing or HDR. It does not work with the flash, which limits your ability in controlled environments to do like fine art reproductions. That's something the Sony can do. Every time you turn the camera off, it turns off IBIS high resolution mode. So you have to go back into the menu to turn it back on. A feature I wish both these cameras had is bail on fail. If the cameras detect camera movement that would ruin the resulting combined image, stop taking pictures and tell me. For those of you who don't have over three grand to buy a super high resolution camera, here's a suggestion. Watch our tutorial on creating panoramas. You can just zoom a lens in or use a more telephoto lens and, and capture six or nine images of your scene and combine them with just a couple of clicks in Lightroom or Lightroom Classic. And it's actually a more reliable and sharper way to create extremely high resolution images. And real world, that's what I rely on most of the time. It kind of renders this whole discussion moot if you know those techniques. Thank you to our sponsor Squarespace who makes this possible. Squarespace allows you to create a beautiful, reliable, technically superior website in just a few minutes without detailed technical expertise. It's a website that'll work on computers and tablets and smartphones that seems to stay up all the time. Why? Because they have brilliant designers, super smart nerds who make all the computer stuff work. Thank you, Squarespace, for giving me a home on the web that is not social media. To get your own home on the web, go to squarespace.com slash Tony. That gets you a free trial. No credit card, no, no risk. Just go try it out. If you love it, which you will, the coupon code Tony will get you 10% off. In the comments down below, I'd like to hear which one of these cameras is the winner to you? Did I make the wrong call? Honestly, I'm super excited to see real competition in the camera industry because that's good for all of us consumers and I hope everybody else starts giving away some free camera firmware updates like Canon did. Don't forget to subscribe. We have an upcoming review of the Canon R8, a whole bunch of secret lenses and much more. Bye.